Hi my loves, welcome back. It's actually not the morning anymore when I'm starting this vlog, but that is just life at the minute, isn't it? As you saw, I started my day with a bubble bath, because why not? And it was very pleasant, and I read my book, which I'm reading Greenwood by Michael Christie at the minute. It's an inter intergenerational story, um, kind of with trees mixed in. So I thought because of my love of the overstory and my love of trees, that would be a good fit for me. I am enjoying it, but I just read Piranesi by Susanna Clarke and I absolutely adored it. It was so good that, you know, when you, when you read a really good book, nothing else quite seems as good in comparison. Um, but I am enjoying Greenwood and that's what I've been reading. I have really been mood reading at the minute. No TBRs, no nothing, just reading whatever I fancy reading next because because that seems to be the best way to actually read and enjoy what I'm reading at the moment um so yes no specific goals um so anyway read my book got out got ready and had some lunch by that time it was lunchtime so just had some pesto pasta with Zach which was rather nice and then I just inhaled some of these like literally inhaled them Orange speckled eggs, orange milk chocolate eggs with a candy shell from m &S. Basically just posh mini eggs, orange chocolate flavoured mini eggs. I'm definitely reaching that point in my pregnancy, I'm almost 34 weeks now, when I feel like I just need to eat more. I can feel my body telling me to ramp it up, but it's also becoming harder to eat large quantities at one time because everything's so squished. All my organs are most definitely under my ribs. That's where I can feel them all. <laughs> there is no room for anything but baby below that. I know that they have all sorts of recommendations about how much more you're supposed to eat during your pregnancy, but I've just been listening to my body and I can tell my body is telling me you need to eat more, you need to eat smaller portions more often because I can tell that from the way, like I said, I inhaled those chocolate eggs. Anyway, my loves, I'm doing something I love to do this morning, which is a far-fetch unboxing. This time I actually have kept all the pieces in the box, so this will be the first time I am gazing upon them. Of course, I've had nowhere to wear anything, <laughs> so that makes an unboxing a little bit easier. I did buy all these things in the hope that I would wear them after pregnancy, but I'm hoping that I will be able to wear at least a couple of the pieces today, now, for you. Um, I'm gonna attempt to try them on. And I have a code for you all for 10% off your Farfetch order, which is 10 Sunbeams FF. I will write it on screen. I will put it in the description box along with all the T's and C's so you can go and have a look and maybe get yourself a little treat. So Farfetch is a website that curates luxury and designer brands um, but it does things a bit differently from other websites, which I particularly like about them. A lot of their stock comes from boutiques across the world, so if you can't go to your boutiques in person and support smaller businesses at the moment, you can shop through Farfetch and support them in that way as well. And that's obviously great for supporting smaller businesses, but also at the same time it means that they often have things in stock that other websites don't have because you're basically shopping from the whole globe and everyone's got different stocks so that is really really useful um, and also because of the sort of global boutique element of Farfetch they're always supporting up-and-coming designers um, which we also love often have lots of unique items on the website as well there's also a lot of pre-owned stuff on there and also there's such a thing as positively far-fetched and so lots of the items are tagged positively conscious which will help you shop a bit more ethically a bit more sustainably if that is important to you as well you may have noticed i'm not adding lots to my wardrobe and not just because i'm pregnant and not just because we're in lockdown um i've not been adding as much to my wardrobe in an attempt to shop a bit less more sustainably really pick things that i know i'm going to get lots of wear out of lots of use out of and still wearing a lot of my existing wardrobe. These are all things that are very important to me in 2021, so yes. So don't forget about my code 10 Sunbeams FF. Um, and without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. So, first up, my loves, we have this gorgeous checked 
blouse. I have high hopes that this will actually fit me at the moment as well. From NSGM. Um, it's got little lace detailing on the shoulders as well. It's quite a kind of girly, flirty silhouette, this. Um, which I think will be so, so nice for springtime. I'm thinking ahead to spring. I'm very excited for the days to be getting longer and warmer. So, and I think this will make a beautiful springtime piece. Very excited to try this on. Love the colours. They're my favourite kind of colours, blues and turquoises. And look at the detailing on the sleeves. How gorgeous is that? But I will let you know how I get on with that one. So you'll have to excuse my less than ideal location, my loves. I don't have a full length mirror here, or even, I don't think there's one in the main house either. That isn't warped. We're just working with what we've got for the try-ons today. But this is the blouse on. I do think it would probably be um, a slightly better shape if you weren't eight months pregnant. But it does fit me now and I do still think it looks really nice, mostly because I just love the sleeve detailing. I've sort of undone the cup, the last couple of buttons just so it has a bit more of a straight shape on me at the minute. It doesn't kind of come in um, weirdly, but I think it will look so beautiful after pregnancy as well. Tucked into some jeans maybe, but I do kind of think it works. Um, but yes, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous blouse. It's got these ties. So you could wear it a bit more open and relaxed, which I actually probably would prefer and then wear some high-waisted jeans. It would look nice, even maybe like slightly off the shoulder. Lots of things you could do with this. Um, but yes, obviously I will leave links to these items down below so that you can go and have a look how they look on a non-pregnant person. <laughs> um, but yes, loving this, big, big fan. And this is a pair of Ghani trousers. Look at these. They're kind of predominantly black, but they still have that sort of wow factor to them that you can pair with basics. So that was my thoughts behind these. I'm very excited to see that they have um, a stretchy waist. They're made of kind of like a crepe material. I'm hoping that they'll fall really nicely. Um, I was gonna try and attempt to put these on and wear them under the bump. Probably be quite long like that on me. So we'll see how we go with that. But if not, I think they'll make lovely trousers for when I am no longer with child. But I just love them. Again, sort of my favorite colors. We got green in here. So here are the trousers and I am in love with these. They fall so nicely. I've tried to approximate as close as possible <laughs> what they would look like worn high-waisted. I am wearing mine sort of rolled up under my bum, but I could get my hips into them, <laughs> so that is a testament to their stretchiness at the moment. Um, but I love these. Look at them. They are so comfortable, but I also love the cut, the fit, and the pattern of them. They are possibly a little longer than they usually would be, though I have rolled them up. So I'm wearing my Aid um, heeled boots, not huge heels, just little heels um, with them. And I will also link up any other Farfetch pieces from my other um, unboxings and hauls for you because I think at least a couple of the pieces are on sale at the moment, definitely including um, these Burberry shoes behind me. Next we have the first of a couple of pairs of shoes, also from Ghani. I actually think these will go really nicely with the trousers. How amazing are these? What would you call these? Sort of lace up Oxford brogy type shoes with a big, thick, chunky sole with a big tread. Um, I wear my Prada boots all the time with the big tread. It's a look that I love. It's got that little kind of grungy vibe to it. It's also kind of practical. <laughs> that partly inspired this purchase. So I could have a very different shoe, but still with that look going on. I love that they're dark green. I don't know if I have any other dark green shoes. I'm so, so excited to wear these. So here I am in my chunky brogues and I love these. Such a good everyday shoe, but kind of a bit different because they are green, because they've got this big sole. But I can just tell I'm gonna get so much wear out of these. Um, and I also think they're the type of shoe which once they loosen up and get a bit of wear, they'll look even better. Um, so I'm a huge, huge fan of these. Can't wait to wear them somewhere. <laughs> Final item for today is a pair of Chloe shoes. I think these ones will be slightly less everyday sort of wear. Something about them just drew them to me. It is this pair of heeled sandals. This heel height is perfect for me. 
I do like wearing a little bit of a heel, but I am not a big heels wearer in general. So something like this or a heeled boot, I really like. It's flattering, it makes you feel sophisticated, but you don't have to commit to full on heel wearing. I also think you could get away with wearing some cute socks with these. Maybe I'll try them on with socks because I have not had a pedicure in quite some time, people. Um, and I think you could get away with that as well. But I just love them. I actually hate most sandals as well. I love tall, strappy heels. Um, but like I say, they're not very practical for me. I'm not a daily heel wearer and a lot of flat sandals I don't like. So I think this is a really, really nice compromise as we move into spring again, <laughs> hoping for spring <laughs> to come soon. Um, yeah, I love them. They also really remind me of things my mum would have worn in like the noughties and like Chloe, like 15 years ago, um, 15, 16 years ago. I just, yeah, I think they have a really nice vibe to them, these, so excited to try these on as well. I am in love with these, even more than I thought I would be. They are so nice. As you see, I am wearing them with some cute sparkly socks because <laughs> you do not want to look at my toes right now, okay, you guys? They're so nice. They feel really comfy, especially with the socks on. We'll see how I hold up. Um, barefoot but how cute are these with the socks I think a nice piece for transitioning seasons without the socks such a nice spring summer piece I'm just a massive fan of these I just think they're really flattering the way that they really hold the foot um, with all the straps I'm not always a fan of square toe sandals either but I think it totally works with these so in love so that is everything in my lives I think I might take a turn about the garden in a couple of my new items maybe maybe take some pics um I haven't taken any pictures for ages which is bad because I like to sort of have a backlog especially because like I said before we work with film a lot um, but haven't taken any for ages and ages also want to do some form of sort of bump shoot um sooner rather than later because it's getting bigger and more uncomfortable don't know if they'll come out nice and I'll like put them on my Instagram but also just for the memories because it's quite incredible how the body transforms um, and I want to take them probably just around the barn because it is quite beautiful so need to do that at some point but it has been quite the few days So, since you last saw me, I've had a nap. All of that changing was too much for me. Zach and I this evening are starting our NCT course, which, if you don't know, I don't even know what it stands for. Usually, they're in-person courses where you meet other women and their partners who are due around the same time as you in your local area. So it's a good way to meet other new parents. They set up this WhatsApp group, you know, discuss things together and just to meet people in your area who have babies similar ages. Um, and I've heard lots of good things. It really works for some people. Obviously, it must be dependent on what kind of group you get and whether you really click with people as well. The main goal of the course is actually to teach you about, um, I assume, the latter stages of pregnancy, childbirth, and I think it's like the first, they say it's like the first thousand days or something they provide support, but I think this course particularly just covers the first few weeks. So like breastfeeding and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm feeling like I'm gonna know a lot of the stuff that they're gonna say, because obviously we have done this positive birth company course, um, which is really informative as well, yes. We'll, we will see, but I'll, I'll let you guys know how we get on with it anyway and see if I would recommend it because the Positive Birth Company course is only £39 and this is quite a bit more expensive than that. Obviously, in normal times, you'd be attending in person. We'll be doing it over Zoom, which is not my ideal, really. 
I'm not very, <laughs> I'm not very good on Zoom. Um, I'm much more of a normal person in real life. But it will be fine and we'll see how we get on. Uh, I'm gonna have to bring my birthing ball over from the house because I keep it over there because that's where we usually watch TV with the family. But I can't, it's like two and a half hours long each session. There's like six or seven of them and I can't be sat here at this table for two and a half hours. So we'll see in the evening so that in normal times again, well, in these times as well, you can do it after work. I'm smack in the middle of my dinner time, but I think we've got a dinner break. I just found some emails in my junk. Um, I think we've got a dinner break, so that's good. Actually, today, I wanted to talk to you about my pregnancy essentials. I'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet, but it actually, I asked for your questions on Instagram the other day, and I may have missed someone asking about these, so, I'm sorry if I missed your question. And I am gonna do my pregnancy Q&A soon, but nobody that I could see, and there were so many questions, so again, I may have missed your question, um, asked me about my pregnancy essentials, but I did wanna share some with you because I have been dwelling on it in my mind. I just thought it might be vaguely interesting. I should probably gather things, shouldn't I? Okay, I've gathered a few of my essentials, but I'm just gonna talk you through them. But I feel very strongly about a few things. There's three things I don't think you should put off buying. I'm really sorry about the focus over here, you guys. It's, it's the lights and the camera. It's all too much, and the books. It's all too much for the camera. <laughs> um, there's three things I don't think you should put off buying. Even if you think you're quite early on and your bump's not big enough, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, I think you should buy these things early on because once you buy them, you'll be like, why did I not get these things sooner? The first is the pregnancy pillow. I love my pregnancy pillow. I've actually got two now, which you may have seen earlier on. One of which my mum was using before and she doesn't need it anymore. So I nicked that one as well to create a hole in which I sleep. <laughs> um, this is the BB Hug Me one. It is one of the more expensive ones you can buy. I personally think it's worth it, but I haven't tried the others. So I don't, I can't fully comment. You can just Google on Amazon all the different types. There's ones that go round your whole body. I feel like that's a bit too much for me um, because I do like to shift a little bit more. And so I like this one. This one's just like a long sausage, basically. It's got an interchangeable cover. I've got two covers for this now. And using these things at the end, you can sort of make it um, more firm or less firm as you prefer. I really like this one, but yes, as I've gotten further in, I also do need some back support, which is where the other one comes in. So you might want to think about it a little bit. You just hug this, basically. Um, and it's nice and long, so it'll give you... Um, it, this one says bump support, but because it is kind of big and round, I find it kind of difficult to get it under my bump. Um, that's also where the other one comes in handy. Maybe I'll show you my sleep setup later on because that one is just simple, um, cheaper one, I think. Um, so yes, you hug it around the top, gives you hip support and ankle support and it's just great. And even if you think you're too, it's too early for a pregnancy pillow, trust me, it's not because your sleep quality is gonna go down so quickly. Mine went down basically immediately because I was peeing so much in the night and anything that will make you more comfortable when you sleep is priceless. So get your pregnancy pillow as early as you want. Another thing that I think you should immediately buy is new underwear. I tried to last for so long with my existing knickers. I don't know why, don't bother doing it. Just get some bigger, stretchier knickers um, because you're just gonna appreciate it so much and everything's gonna be comfier, and also bras. I pretty much immediately needed um, bigger bras, bigger bust, and now at this stage I'm at, obviously a much bigger back as well. Final thing which I think you should buy as early as you like is a birthing ball. Again, this is something I waited ages to buy, and I only got mine a couple weeks ago, and I wish I'd got it earlier, because it helps for lots of reasons. It helps get baby in a good position because you're kind of sat up on it. 
um, and you are moving your pelvis around and it helps the baby get into a good position for birth. So we like that and we want to do that as early as possible. Um, so that baby's head down. But also I am amazed at how uncomfortable sofas have become for me and sitting down and reclining and just everything is uncomfortable. Um, I'm sort of best either lying down or standing up at the moment and sitting is difficult. I still like sitting, <laughs> but it is difficult. Um, I have to get myself propped in all sorts of ways. Um, and also you're not supposed to really sit and recline too much because that's one of the worst positions for you in terms of getting baby into a good position. So the birthing ball helps because it keeps you upright and forward and it helps you can move around a little bit, bounce on it um, to relieve some of the weight, etc. So that can be a really good thing to get if you work at a desk all day. You could have one instead of a desk chair. You could just bounce on it for a little bit whilst watching TV. I don't tend to do it all evening, but I do think it's quite a good option when you're just like, I'm so uncomfortable and I don't know how to sit. <laughs> um, also draping yourself over it. And also apparently it's great in labour, but that remains to be seen. So if you're in your first trimester, early second trimester, and you're like, I don't think I am big enough or pregnant enough for these things, you are, trust me. Get them and your life will change. Other things, I've used loads, deep heat patches or a hot water bottle as well. These are good if you're more sort of on the go. Um, the hot water bottle is probably more effective and obviously good because it's not disposable. These are a lifesaver for the back. I also have had kind of a sciatica type feeling periodically, especially after I do a long walk or something like that. So I like it for that as well. And then also, because you're not supposed to take um, ibuprofen and that sort of thing, you can still take paracetamol through your pregnancy, but not super regularly. I've been uncomfortable for many days on the trot and you don't want to be taking loads and loads of paracetamol. So I have been finding heating and cooling methods very useful. Sometimes I still take paracetamol when I'm just like, this isn't working for me, but they are really nice options. This is just an ice pack from my fridge. <laughs> Um, and I just put this on my head, wrapped in some kitchen roll or something, or a towel or something for headaches. I know lots of ladies get pregnancy-induced headaches, and like I said before, throughout my whole first trimester, basically, I was sat with an ice pack on my head because I had so much pressure. Although it occurred to me the other day that maybe it was, um kind of caffeine withdrawal as well a little bit. I just couldn't drink Diet Coke as quickly <laughs> or as much of it as I used to be able to. So it could have been a bit of that as well. And I wasn't drinking as much coffee or anything like that. Still drinking caffeine um, within the sort of recommended limits, but yes, it could have been that as well. Honestly, I think that's all my absolute essentials. Um, also maybe don't put off getting yourself Comfier trousers if you need them. I haven't bought many, but those that I have, I've worn a lot. And it just makes a huge difference to being comfy. Oh, leggings. Yeah, leggings is good because they're a bit more presentable as well sometimes than some lounge trousers. I really like the Seraphine ones that I bought. They're the best ones. I did buy some H&M ones. I think I bought some ASOS ones. but And the Seraphine ones are more expensive, but... They are not so much nicer. They're just like a nice stretchy material. The only reason I've been wearing them less here is because it's a little bit chillier to wear leggings, I find. And it has been the depths of winter. Those are my essentials to get you through, but I mostly just wanted to encourage anyone that's delaying buying bits for themselves. Don't delay because it will make you comfier. And that's very important. I... I'm going to prepare myself to get on this NCT Zoom. <laughs> Wish me luck. And I'll speak to you guys all in a bit. I think Indy's making us dinner this evening, which is very exciting. And we've got a dinner break midway through at eight. So it is a little bit later in the day. I'm about to get in bed 
But before I do, I thought I would quickly show you my sleep setup. So this is what we're working with at the moment. So I have put this one down first and possibly a tiny bit lower and I put my bum sort of here and lie here, obviously. And this one I use to support my back so that I can almost like slightly turn onto my back when I'm sleeping. You're not supposed to lie properly on your back and I'm mostly lying on my side but it just kind of allows a little bit more wiggle room so I don't have to be fully on my side because that can hurt my hips. Um, and then I use the front bit, because it's quite flat, this one, to support my bump. And then I hug this. So this would obviously be if I was sleeping on my right side. And then I would like carry this over in the night to my left um, and switch between the sides, basically. And the reason I like this setup was I was using this with just like a pillow like this behind my back but when I wanted to turn from left to right <laughs> I would have to move I would have to move with this which is easy because you're kind of hugging it but I would also have to move the pillow behind me which is not very convenient whereas with this obviously I can just switch and it will support me in the middle I'm pretty sure you're supposed to have it the other way around have your head on this that's how you're supposed to use this pillow but that is my preferred setup so if you're struggling with your setup um that is my recommendation anyway my loves it is time for me to go to bed i'm gonna do a bit of reading before i go to sleep zach is in the bath hence why he's not up here um if he comes up before we go to sleep we might watch some off some of the office but i don't know <laughs> but our nct class was really nice it was nice to just see other First time parents on camera. It, I was so nervous beforehand. These things always give me loads of like social anxiety beforehand. And I'm like, what if it's so awkward and whatever. And it was absolutely fine. Yes, nice to meet other parents that live nearby. Nearby when we're in London. Would have been nicer in person. But alas, such a thing cannot happen at the moment. Um, in terms of information... I've not heard anything I haven't heard before yet. Um, we covered basically what happens in labour today. And I do think, in terms of info, Positive Birth Company is probably more useful. We'll see how we go. I probably know more about the labour and birthing stuff than I do about the breastfeeding um, and postpartum stuff. But at the same time, I am a bit of a... Googler. So I feel like I have accrued a fair bit of info on that. Plus I'm thinking of doing the Positive Birth Company's postpartum pack as well because I have really enjoyed their labour and delivery stuff. Anyway, so that's that's how that went. Promise it won't all be baby and pregnancy stuff but I am just trying to get things in order at the moment. Um, and it just so happened that we started that course today. But yes, I know this afternoon has been a lot of telling and not a lot of showing. I forgot to show you guys our dinner because um, we actually had it whilst we were on our Zoom. <laughs> and then we watched Married at First Sight Australia, which we've been enjoying very much. But it's possibly a little bit too staged at certain points for me. But nonetheless, it's something to watch every weeknight in lockdown, so... You really can't ask for much more than that at the moment. I am also really enjoying RuPaul's Drag Race, particularly the UK version. Um, it's been really, really good so far. So I've been watching that as well. But other than that, there's really not much on that at the moment, is there? I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog and I will see you again very soon.